نحمده ونصلي ونسلم على رسوله الكريم أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم Brothers and sisters, assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Okay, so my previous video was about haram relationships and, and why we should be out of them and why we shouldn't be getting involved in them and building that relationship with Allah. And it was titled, But I Love Him. And if you haven't watched it, go. Go watch it because this is a follow up of that video. Because then I had an amazing response from all these people saying, Wow, mashallah, your video was great and, it wants to, and, and we want to get out of our haram relationship now, but how? And I was like, Oh, okay. I need to make that video. Then. So in this video, we're going to go through four very simple steps on how to pull yourself out of that pit, out of the haram relationship and find a purpose to life. And as a sister who has grown up in, in, in the British culture, I know how hard it is to, to fight against the waves. So like everybody else is doing one thing, but you are trying to do another thing, trying to please Allah. And it's very, very difficult. So I want to shorten it out for you. I want to make little steps for you um, to make it easier for you guys to get back on track. Inshallah. First and foremost, your intention, your niya. Who are you doing this for? Are you doing this because you've found a better offer? Are you doing this because you've got a better rishta coming now and you want to get married? Or are you doing this because the guy cheated on you? Or are you doing it to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? You know, try and rebuild that connection, ask for forgiveness for everything that you've done. Let the soul go back home to, to, to where it finds comfort. Because verily, in the remembrance of Allah, do the hearts find ease. So get that initial thought right. Who am I doing this for? Why am I doing this? Am I being sincere in this? So get that initial thought ready because it will help you to stay steadfast later on uh, down the journey. Because if you do it for anyone else or any other reason except Allah, then believe me, somewhere down the line you will end up in the same sticky situation again. So get your mindset right. Think this this whole struggle, this journey that I'm about to go on, my Lord, this is for you. And I know, I know that I have done wrong, but you are our Rahman and our Rahim, and I know that you will guide me. And I know that if I ask for guidance, you will guide me, and if I ask for forgiveness, you will forgive me. And then if you think it's best, speak to your haram partner. Tell them what you're int intending. Say, this is what I want to do. Um, I don't want to live this haram life anymore. I want to... Go, get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and this is not really helping this is a massive barrier between me and my Lord and hopefully the other person will understand and inshallah it will trigger a thought in their head as well and they might tr start their own journey between them and Allah so speak to them about it if not if you get a very bad reaction from that person then pff, then you know then you already know what it is then you better jump on that bus towards Allah and away from that guy. Number two, you need to control, alt and delete that person out of your life. I'm talking erase photos, erase numbers, erase any kind of contact, email address, any uh, information that you have about where they live and, and, and whatnot. Delete videos, delete any photographs that you have together, any special moments, all your old convos and your text messages and your Facebook messages, everything you've got, everything you've got, delete it. Old convos, old convos are the shaitan's biggest weapon. Just when you think you got your life back on track and you're just like, Alhamdulillah, I am, I am doing so well without this person. And you're just like absolutely fine. And oh, all of a sudden you stumble over your old phone and you're going through it and you're looking through all those text messages. Shaitan's like, oh, look, you said you'd never leave him. And you're just like, no. Don't fall for it. Cut it off at its roots. Erase, delete absolutely everything you got. Even in your mind. You know, train your mind to forget that person purely for the sake of Allah. You're doing this for the sake of Allah, let's do it properly. So get your mind. Train your mind not to think about that person. And every time a memory creeps up and is like, Oh, remember when he did? And you're like, Shh, 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 shh. Clear up all that clutter in the brain and all the memories that the, the that are taking space, you know, just clear it up, clean it and then use that space for, for the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and, and, and to memorize a hadith or memorize an ayah of the Qur'an. So you're literally purifying yourself from that person physically as well as mentally. Anytime you remember something that will make you sad, remember Allah and your heart will find peace. Every time a memory comes up, just be like, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Any kind of zikr, just keep it on your tongue. Hasbi Allah wa ni'mal wakeel. Just keep saying that. Keep saying that to yourself to console you. Yeah? Number three, let it all out. 
Now this is this is the stage that researchers and counselors talk about and they and and they say this is the the depression phase. And of course, we're humans and we're going to go through this as well. So when you go through this depression phase, just let your heart pour out. Let all the pain fall out of your chest. Cry and weep, but only to Allah. If you look at modern day tips on how to get over a breakup, they'll say speak to your friends, be around company, don't be by yourself because it's going to depress you. But a Muslim is never by himself. A believer is never by himself because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that I am closer to you than your jugular vein. So we are never alone. He is so close to us that he's closer than the jugular vein. He is so close to us that he knows what's in our hearts and our minds. So how can we ever be alone? So what you do is when you're upset, cry to him, speak to him. He is your best friend. You're not going to get a listener better than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is as-samir al-aleem. He is the best listener and he's he is the all-knowing. He'll know whatever you're going through. If you tell a friend, they can't feel the pain. They don't know what it feels like. They can feel sorry for you, but they don't know. But when you speak to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He knows. He knows how much it hurts. He knows how much you miss Him. And He appreciates that you are doing this just for Him. And He will love you so much more. In Surah Fajr, He tells us, Inna rabbaka labil mirsad, That indeed your Lord is ever watching. He, he is aware. He is aware of the pain that you're going through. He is aware of all the hardships that you have to go through. It's not easy. It's not an easy task. Nobody ever said it was easy. But if you do it for the sake of Allah, the reward will be so much better. So cry and let it all out, but know that this is good for you. Know that the fact that you're making this sacrifice for the sake of Allah, you will be rewarded for it. And you will be purified from inside. Because not a prick of a thorn hits a believer without uh, a sin being uh, relieved from him. We know that uh, Allah is with the, the broken hearted. Those who are broken hearted for his sake, he says, I am with them. And so this hardship that is so big, it's so much more painful than the prick of a thorn. So imagine the sins that are being relieved from you through this process. And you know what the best thing is? That when you go through a hard time and you discuss it with another human being, or you discuss it with your friends or your parents, they will always remember this. They won't forget it. And they will always have that image of you in their head. No matter what you've told them, they will always know. And then when you're over this phase, although it seems like a big thing now, when you're over this phase, then you will look back on what you said to them and you will feel slightly embarrassed. We all go through it. You feel a bit embarrassed. Oh, I shouldn't have said this at that time. I shouldn't have said it to that specific person. But when you tell your problems to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you will never feel ashamed. You can cry as much as you like to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you will never feel bad. You will never look back and say, I shouldn't have done that. Now, some of us, it's going to take a few weeks. Some of us, a few months. Some might even take a few days. But however long it takes, be patient. In Allah sabirin, Allah is with the patient ones. So take it step by step. Worship Allah. Stay on top of your salah. Stay on top of your dhikr. After this procedure of like crying and 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 that depression phase and speaking to Allah and and trying to get over things, we get to step four. Pick yourself up and sort yourself out. Nobody ever died of a broken heart. So get over it and appreciate the life that you have and all the other billions of blessings that you have in your life. Have a look at them. And this is the phase when you're like, all right, I'm done crying. I'm done wasting my time on him. And this is the time where you go and get a life. Now, the best way to go and get a life is to find a passion or, or a hobby that you enjoy and use your spare time in that. Everybody, every single one of us is good at something everyone so go and find your talent and go and do something about it if you have a passion for reading spend all your spare time reading so the thoughts don't go through your head if you have a passion for writing write pages and pages and pages of the experience that you went through of, of what kind of person you are now this is your chance to make changes to your life so that you're not stuck in the past anymore and you're thinking about the future and you're thinking about progress so think i want you to think about something that you're good at or something that you really really like doing and then excel in it. Believe in yourself. You've already wasted too much time on that person now, so you need to grow in character and, and, and develop on this newly found relationship between you and your Lord. Because seriously, when your life gets played back to you on the day, 
and you realize that you spent so much time and everybody else is watching that you spent so much time crying over another person and not you know out of, for forgiveness from Allah or out of love for Allah that's going to be seriously awkward that is going to be a very shameful moment Allah protect us and veil all our faults on the day of judgment so now you've got this fresh mindset and you're thinking okay all right let's do something with my life so now when the shaitan's like oh remember when he did and you're like ain't nobody got time for that no <laughs> And this is the period where your life flourishes and all those struggles that you went through for the sake of Allah, Allah grants you barakah and blessings in your life and He'll guide you to all these beautiful places and all these beautiful people and you will have all this barakah in your life and good times will come because your Lord is pleased with you. So as young British Muslims, we haven't got time to waste over a haram relationship. We've got so much going for ourselves. We've got the dunya to build up our deeds and we've got the akhirah to work for. So fr quite frankly, we don't have time to waste on a haram relationship. We're too busy doing dawah and being totally amazing. And my sincere du'as go out to all the brothers and sisters who have made this intention and are embarking upon this journey. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant you guidance and raise your ranks and give you happiness in the dunya as well as the akhirah. That's it for this video, but do me a favor, please like, comment and subscribe to the channel so you can stay updated with all the videos that are coming out. I'm going to leave the links of Instagram and Facebook uh, in the description below. Like our Facebook page and, and follow me and what Dusty Diamonds are doing and all our new projects. If, you, if anybody has any questions or any topics that you want me to talk about, then you can contact me on D2D Nasiha uh, email address. Or you can catch me on Facebook, on the Dusty Diamonds Facebook page. Those are the two easiest ways to get in contact with me. Please make dua for me and be my witnesses on the day that I brought the message to you.